Have you ever wondered about the various opportunities available to you as a songwriter today? Well, if you have, then you don't want to miss our conversation with independent hit songwriter Michelle Weiss Maslin. We discuss the level of quality that's required for songs to be competitive today, as well as the importance of listening to current music to keep up with musical sounds and trends, and much, much more. Coming up. This episode of the Mubu TV Insider Video Series is brought to you by the Music Business Registry. The Music Business Registry is the leading music industry publisher of the most up-to-date contact information for major and independent record label A&R, music publishers, artist managers, music attorneys, music supervisors, and much, much more. The Music Business Registry is the trusted industry standard and source serving the music business community for over 30 years with the most accurate and up-to-date contact information available. Their titles include the a r Registry, the Film and Television Music Guide, the Music Publisher Registry, and the Music Attorney Registry. All of their publications are available in PDF, CSV, or online subscription. Visit musicregistry.com and use coupon code MUBUTV10 at checkout. That's musicregistry.com, coupon code MUBUTV10. When you're ready to put your music to work, musicregistry.com. We're coming at you live from Sing Summit here in Hollywood. And we managed to catch up with my good friend, Michelle Weiss-Maslin, hit songwriter and producer. Michelle, thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. And thank you for having me. It's a big honor. I appreciate it. Anytime. Now, Michelle, you've been a songwriter and a producer for a long time. And I'm curious, in your mind, in the business today, are there more opportunities for songwriters or fewer? Uh, that's a great question. And I think there are definitely more. I think that it, perhaps they aren't as lucrative. But I think that there are incredible amounts of opportunities for music placement right now in terms of video games, advertisements, the internet, YouTube, artists, just incredible amounts, um, film, TV. It's just endless. So I think there's a great amount of opportunity. Okay. Over the last several years, we've seen styles, you know, change and emerge. Obviously, you know, that's part of, of culture. And I'm curious, does your approach to songwriting change as the market changes in terms of styles of music that are being cut? Or does your approach to production change? Or Definitely. Okay. Definitely. Um, I We have to keep morphing. I try to be fresh myself and change myself, not just amongst what's going on. But definitely when you listen to music from the 60s, it sounds different from music from the 70s, from the 80s, from the 40s. So definitely music changes and we adjust our sounds. I think technology also increases that change because we have different ways of making interesting sounds. Mm -hmm. I would say in terms of country music, perhaps it's a little less change. Mm -hmm. But even so, there's some change because country music is becoming a little more pops, but but still a little less. You know, now even in country, there's electronic instruments being used in some things. So I would definitely say that we're we have to keep trying to evolve. Okay, as a songwriter today, what is your greatest challenge that you face in the as a songwriter in the marketplace today? Personally, I would say the declining fees rates, the fact that people don't buy music anymore makes it much more difficult to make a living anymore. And so I have to work even harder, whereas really at this point, I should have to work less. I have to work harder to earn the same amount of money consistently because I'm being paid less for every placement, every song that's recorded, all the royalty rates have dropped. So because of that, that's what makes it more of a challenge. Okay. In light of that, do you place a certain emphasis on getting certain kinds of placements or certain kinds of records as a result of, of the uh, money dropping? Or is it is it the same? It's it's definitely the same. It's across the board. I'm just chasing wherever, okay. you know, trying to see if this artist is looking for songs, if this film or this TV show, if this video game. So it's pretty much as the same as it's always been, trying to chase down the work. Right. But, but as you said, there's a lot more opportunities for 
those placements or for the work today than there was perhaps 20 years ago. Yes, that makes it even more more time consuming to do all the chasing because now I have to chase across a huge spectrum. Whereas before when there were so few networks and so few TV shows and less artists, it was actually an easier thing. Now it's a challenge to even you know, find out about all the projects that are going on, right? Every day there's a new network, a new TV show. There's a million films being made and artists all over the place and independent artists. And and so it's so much broader now, the areas to pitch and to find those opportunities. For, for music. Yes. Okay. So even, you know, though there's a lot of opportunity, one has to find those opportunities and they're ever, you know, it's a lot of work to look around. No, precisely. It's a lot of networking yeah. and, and that there wasn't before. Um, in, in terms of the quality of what you need to present, mm-hmm. I understand. I mean, I, I hear all the time and I'd like to hear from you that technology and our access to technology has really raised the bar on what people expect when they get like a song from a songwriter. Like it, it's, I'm told it almost has to be like finished master quality where the production has to be top notch. And that's because it can be today. Is that true? Yes, you're absolutely correct. I, the, my productions are records. They're ready to go. They're ready to have Beyonce come sing on top of it and mix it. They're, they're, they're done. They sound like records and they have to, mostly because the A&R people pretty much use, utilize the writer producer as the producer of the project. It's not like years ago where there were separate producers who came and cut your song and reproduce them. Now, I think that budgets don't allow for that time. I think also they hear what they like and they like it. So that what they like is not just the song, but the entire production. It's everything combined. And that's what they want their artists to be participating in. So, and also for film and TV, it always has had to be master quality because they're replacing or they're utilizing new music in instead of using a hit song to save money. So my new songs that are used to be demos have to sound like records because if not, they're not usable in these in these shows and video games. So definitely, I spend so much time producing the songs. I mean, it takes three hours to write it and 80 hours to produce it. Well, this brings up an interesting point then as a writer. And, and, and I guess the other distinction is as a producer, which is, you know, years ago, like you said, someone else would produce it and you would just make the demo. And of course, technology didn't allow it. But it seems like what you're saying today is that a songwriter who wants to be professional and get into this market really needs to have not only the skill set of writing, but they need to have production chops or be working with people who really know that world. And that seems to be a skill set that takes a lot of years to learn. Exactly. To do it well. Is that yes, true? That's, to- that's exactly true. Um, a songwriter who doesn't have an incredible recording of their song really doesn't have a lot to work with. Okay. So if they are not a producer themselves, that's fine, but they need to be collaborating with people who can produce those recordings. Most of my collaborators don't produce, and I actually prefer that because I, my passion is producing and arranging the music. So it's fine if they don't because I'd rather do it myself. I'd rather do it myself than collaborate with another co-writer on the production as well. I, personally, I would just rather do it. Mm-hmm. So I, it doesn't matter to me. But if if I'm but if for the writers who don't produce, yes, they they need to be connected or they need to have someone they pay to produce it. Even that's fine as well. But they they have no choice but to make it sound incredible. How long did it take you? when you began as a writer to really hone your production chops, how many years was that before you really felt confident that I can go in and, okay, I've got the writing, but now I know what I'm doing. Well, I started writing when I was so young. Okay. So I would say by the time I was, you know, 20 years old, Mm -hmm. I was a good producer already. I had always done it, but I come from a time where you come from where there were no, no machines. Right. And so the songwriters naturally produce their own recordings, their own demos, because we had no choice. We hired musicians Mm -hmm. and we learned in the school of hard knocks how to create. Now I'm sure some of us became better at it than others. Sure. Well, mostly because if it's your, if it's your passion, I mean, if it's not, 
you if it's you're not really interested in it, then you wouldn't. But I was interested in it. It was exciting for me to work with the musicians. Right. And so basically, by the time I was pitching songs, like the first time I met you and pitched a song to you, um, that song sounded pretty great mm -hmm. to me. I mean, to me already, when I listen back to my songs from back then, I still I still get them used and placed in, in things when they're looking for retro songs because sure. they sound good. So I would say I learned how to do that very early on because I loved doing it so much and learned to understand what all the instruments do, what their ranges are, what the singers do, how to arrange the background vocals. And and so, yes, they sounded good. Um, I would imagine that a lot of that skill set that you're talking about comes over the years from listening to a lot of different production and picking up, like you said, of what instruments can do, what the ranges are in terms of listening and say, oh, I want to apply that sound or whatever to my record. Do you spend a lot of time listening to contemporary pop music? Just so much time. Yes, exactly. And that's a great, great question and a great observation. Definitely. I mean, you've been in music for so long. So, of course, I study the music that I'm trying to create in the similar genre i listen and listen to not just the song part but all the instruments and what everything's doing mm -hmm. in order to understand or but for years i worked for 18 years on a soap and that was the greatest thing because what happened to me was i would get requests overnight that i need um latin music salsa music oh my goodness I've never done that. Oh my goodness. Okay, now I've got to go listen to 8,000 recordings and get one and learn how to do this. So, because of that, really, I learned so I, I got a lot of education because I was always asked to create heavy metal music or cre create different styles of Russian Cossack music. And I'd have to go and figure out how to do that marching band. Once once I called someone, a music supervisor, and I was just soliciting them out of the blue, mm -hmm. and the guy said to me, uh, no, I don't do that, but can you do this? And what it was, and I said, yes, what it was was a marching band arrangement of the Star Spangled Banner. Okay. I had never done a marching band arrangement before. But you knew the song. I knew the song. I listened to a ton of marching band music, and um, I in the movie and, the and you movie. created what they wanted i did and you know i mean <laughs> you stepped up to the plate and did it yeah yes, you delivered. yes so i mean yes so it was from all of that reference you know that research and reference to listening 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 to how do all these marching band instruments work oh that's right. so cool you know so definitely okay that's good to know now the other thing about you michelle which is interesting is that you also you run a workshop for artists, for writers, uh, producers, can you tell us about that? It's a it's a creative right uh, creative workshop. Can you can you? It's so actually not a creative workshop. No? It's a business workshop. Okay, it's a business. Okay, yes. pardon me. It's a business. Yeah, workshop, that's okay. Though. Yes, okay. um, one would think it would be, but I actually it could be creative, but no one asks any creative questions. Okay, they they all. I started this a year ago. This will be the third one I'm doing this week, and I. I mostly get fired business questions about the business, royalty collections and foreign issues and and how to license songs and how to contact music supervisors and and uh, how to register songs at ASCAP and BMI and CSAC and how, how you know, and a lot of the people that I get at the workshop are, are already, they're making, earning money, they're placing songs, but they're right. clueless. Okay. They have no idea how, no idea why things just happen for them. They can't read the royalty statements. Look, today, a, a collaborator of mine, a Tony Award winning collaborator who's written number one songs, does not know how to index his song at ASCAP. He hasn't registered any of the songs from his hit musicals at ASCAP. Why? Because... He used to have a publisher who did that, and he never empowered himself with the knowledge. So I get people like that. It's not people always who are just starting out. Right, it's, it's people, knowledgeable people, people who are. I have friends who make so much money placing songs that cannot read the royalty statements for the life of them. They have no clue. And so these people come, and I try to empower them and and educate them how to do these things and get you know knowledge is power. Yes, and um, read their contracts and negotiate and navigate. The business because the other thing i especially love is pitching songs mm -hmm. and a lot of songwriters don't like to do it but i teach them how to fish mm -hmm. so that it's not so scary and how to deal with the rejection 
Right. <laughs> you know, so basically that's what it's about. And they shoot questions at me for five, six hours. And uh, I do a Q&A because I find that like a lot of times when people go to these big, um, uh, seminars. big seminars, yeah. which they're fabulous, they're amazing. They get so much information, but they don't know what to do with it. And a lot of times the panelists, by the time they've discussed who they are and what they're about, there's no time to ask a question. So I decided that I would do this so that people could come ask their questions. And it's been really pretty fabulous. That's fantastic. Um, you know, because you've been running that. And I think it's 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 interesting in listening to you because one would think that it's all amateurs that don't know. And they assume, well, if you're making money, of course, you know, all that. No, you don't. And that's that's good to hear that even Tony Award winning songwriters and, and, you know, very successfully financially, you know, well off people don't know these things. They don't know how to read a statement. They don't know how to index songs that ask kept it. So and this is all stuff that, you know, people need to know if they want to have a career in the business. It's not just the ability to write. It's the ability to have, you know, a functioning career in this business. Exactly. Um, Michelle, today, what specific suggestions would you give to our viewers out there who are thinking about a career as a songwriter uh, who want to do this professionally in terms of starting? Creatively? Well, well creatively and business-wise. Like, if somebody says to you, Michelle, I really want to be, my dream is to be a hit songwriter. I want to be a hit songwriter. I want to be a successful songwriter and make my living doing this. What suggestions would you have for me starting out? Well, the first thing, obviously, that they need to have is an ability to write a song. Right. So let's say they don't even have that. Let's say they don't haven't written anything, but they've always thought that would be really cool. Mm -hmm. Then I would suggest to them that they learn to write a lyric, that they um, learn that they collaborate with someone, you know, uh, right. meet someone who knows how to do it, that to create something and see if it's really something they love. Uh, maybe they're a singer and they've never written a song before, but they think that would be really great for them if they connected with an actual songwriter. They could start that because the first thing that's necessary is a body of work. Mm -hmm. If one doesn't have a body of work and you're when you were doing A&R and I come to you and I'm like, Rich, I want to work with you and I have not one song. I'm of no use to you. Even if you like that one song, right. so you might I might burn that bridge with you, especially with a music supervisor. Because sure. Now the music supervisor likes this song, but they're like, well, what else? You have nothing? Well, what? You know, discard you. Next. Next, next. Right. So it's really important to have a body of work. It's important, as we were discussing before, to have the, some, the productions be really good. There's an awesome place called songyou.com. Have you heard of that? Like Song University? Okay, songyou.com. So song um, right. And that is the most amazing place for all things songwriter. Okay. To, to learn how to write a song. To you can People come to my, I teach there once a month, I give a critique class. Sometimes I'll get someone who brings in four lines of a lyric and wants a critique and wants help going from there. I mean, it can be very basic. This is an, a really wonderful resource. So now after they have a body of work, and for a body of work, I would say they need to have at least I mean, 25 songs. I have a, over a thousand recorded, but I, you know, I would say they need to at least 25 songs so they're of use to somebody that are recorded well. Mm -hmm. Then they need to start researching. Who would they write songs for? What's their musical passion? Do these songs sound like Beyonce or Carrie Underwood? I mean, are they country songs? Are they rock songs? Are they R&B songs? That maybe they wrote 25 in different genres and that's cool too. But if they did that, then they better write some more because they need more than one in, in a genre to be of use to someone. Okay. But, um, you know, they need to watch, if they're watching the TV show Nashville and they see who is, you know, this is obviously country songs. We're mm -hmm. not going to pitch heavy metal to Nashville. Right. That would be a mistake. And you burn another bridge <laughs> to the music supervisor. Look in the credits. You see who the music supervisor is, right? Now we get your book <laughs> when we find out their information. Right. Now we spike them and we try to get them to listen to our songs. I mean, it, it seems so simple and basic because it really is. Now, if they listen, who knows? I mean, right. but, you but know, it's about establishing that relationship. Yes, you have to establish the relationships. And there were days like that guy I called on the telephone for this huge movie who needed something. And I called him at the right time. Now, people people say to me, well, you have all this success. It's so much easier for you. But it's not easier for me because I've been doing it a really long time. And maybe I'm not so cool to them. A young person comes along who's got 
they're brand new, that might interest them even more. So I feel everyone has an opportunity. We just have to be able to research and find out, is who, Beyonce, okay, Beyonce, look, look up on her credits. Who's her A&R guy? Who's her manager? Okay, find that. The information is so easy to find these days. Your book lists every A&R right. person and every manager, every, every, everything, the writer producers. Just try to contact them. I have really worked grassroots like that. You know, I've really not relied on other people to do these things. I really use resources like LinkedIn. Like and now it's easier because now I can go on LinkedIn and look up whoever I'm looking for. Or I can go to Facebook and look up whatever I'm looking for. So, um, you know, if someone wants to be in the business, they have to have good research skills. Okay. And they also have to be very polite, which I try to train people because all day long I get, hey, I'm so-and-so. I do this, I do this, I do this, help me. And I never get, thank you for your time. I hope this finds you well. I love what you do. You seem to know how to do this. They say something nice about me, so I want to help you. Right. But they never say thank you. They never say please. They lack social skills. They lack social skills. They don't know how to write a business letter. So I'd say if you want to be in this business, learn how to write a business letter. Learn how to approach people. Because even though it is the music business, and yeah, we are a little lax here, you don't want to call an A&R guy and go, hey. It's not really polite. And and I believe that people who are polite, people who have these kind of skills, people who can communicate in addition to having songs. Last week, someone sent me some songs like this. They put four music supervisors and they put three MP3s. No note, no nothing, no nothing. Like nobody's going to take time to listen to who are? I don't even know who you are. Some really valuable pieces of information and insights from Michelle. So, insiders, question of the day. What really stood out to you in our conversation with Michelle? Was it the expanded opportunities that are out there for songwriters today? Or was it the quality level that song demos need to be at to be competitive in today's market? Or was it the amount of listening she does to contemporary music to keep up her own production and songwriting chops? Or maybe it was something else that connected with you. We'd love to hear from you and connect in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe to Mubu TV for more information on how to educate, empower, and engage your music career. You can also check out a summary of this episode and everything we talked about in the description below as well. And if you enjoyed this video, we'd love it if you hit the like button and let us know what other kinds of videos and types of content you want to see on our channel. Hit us up in the comments below, and we'll see you in the next video.